Hospice of the Fisher Home, located in Amherst, Massachusetts, is available to serve all of your hospice needs, providing service in your home or ours with dignity, compassion, and respect. In the residence or in your own home, a plan of care is determined by the patient's individual needs as well as the needs of their family and caregivers. I think the medical field feels that when someone is at that end stage of life, they are told that there's nothing more that they can do. And that's not true, because that's when hospice offers so much. This is a time that um, we can focus so much more on the quality of someone's life, on the quality of the um, patient's families. Most people want to die at home. Um, and the opposite is actually true. They'll either die in a hospital or some kind of institution. And I think when people are told whether um, they have a, a life-threatening disease, you know, they, people immediately focus on the death piece. And I think that we focus on that they are still here. And what is it that needs to wrap up? What, what do they need to have a peaceful death? Is it information? Is it companionship? Is it um, you know, a spiritual connection that they re need to reconnect to? Are there relatives that they haven't seen that need to come and um, see them again before they die? We have care here 24-7. And there's always a nurse and a home health aide on duty. Our patient to nurse ratio is six to one, but we also have a community aspect of the um, program so that we can go out into people's homes where we can care for them there as well. Uh, some people do want to stay in their homes and we go there on a regular basis with nursing, um, home health aides, uh, social workers, uh, bereavement and spiritual counseling, the whole, the whole blanket of aspects of our facility here can be offered in the home as well. A lot of patients come to us with uh, cancer, for example, and they've gone through radiation and chemo and they still have pain issues. And that's really one of our specialties is pain management and pain control. And um, we've got an excellent uh, medical director that we work with as well as the patient's own personal doctor. And we dovetail all those uh, together so that we give the highest and best comfort to the patient. In hospice, one of the unique things about us is that we stay with the family for one year after the person dies. I think the thing that I appreciate was the support of the staff in dealing with me and my wife and my family as we were really trying to come to terms with and we had no experience dealing with how my mom was failing. We didn't know how to make sense, not only medically, but also psychologically, of, uh, of losing her and watching her slip away. Uh, so to have an opportunity to talk through um, some of these issues about the incipient grief. We were grieving, my mother was not dead, but we were grieving already her slipping away. And I think the, the richness of being able to talk with people who understood this and uh, and were there for us. They, they knew my mother. It's not like I had to go to a separate social service agency or, or, or visit with a psychiatrist who had no knowledge of my mother. So I felt that there was a comprehensive um, system uh, here that supported not only my mother, but supported my whole family. Hospice volunteers are carefully selected and trained to work with patients and their families. The opportunities here at the home are to do many things. I think a lot of the volunteers, uh, first and foremost, want to spend time with the patients. Um, we value that as the most important thing. And um, But there's so many opportunities. I also grocery shop for the patients. And um, there's always yard work to do. People can fold clothes, make, uh, prepare meals. It truly is a home away from home. We have a lot of people that have favorite foods. We try really hard to accommodate that. Um, and at the end of life, you know, dessert comes first sometimes. And um, ice cream, we have a lot of ice cream in our freezer. And so um, as much as it might not be nutrition for the body anymore, um, it is nutrition for the soul. 
The birdhouses for us um, are very symbolic. Every room has a birdhouse outside of it that patients can watch the birds, whether it's summer or winter. They all adore the birdhouses. Um, they spend a lot of time, many of them, in bed in the last days. And to have those little birds come flying up near their window, um, I think is a diversion for them. Each um, family that comes in is given a quilt, and when their loved one has died, the quilt is given to um, one of the family members. The patients love them. They just feel so comforted by them. And then when they do die and the family member gets it, it's something that is just um, a treasure for them. It's something that is a, me a memory for them that they thought was going to be such a traumatic experience and yet there was a silver lining somehow that with the help of hospice and the team um, they were able to find um, some kind of silver lining and some kind of transformation in, in pulling the love together rather than the fear. I think the thing that I would tell prospective families about the Fisher home is you have a professional staff, very caring, you have a network of volunteers, and you have a physical space that makes that professionalism really work. This is a small, intimate space. When I come to visit, I'm greeted. Ralph, how are you today? I've come to know the staff. It's that intimacy, that's in, that, it, that engagement, and that professionalism in a, in a wonderful package. Hospice services are typically covered by Medicare and Medicaid. Additionally, some private insurance also provides resources to cover hospice care. Choosing the right hospice is an important step.